Monkey, you can't stop feeding every time I film. We're never going to film today. Good morning, everyone. It is currently just before 9am, and little monkey and I are up for the day. Well, we're up as in he's dressed, someone's dressed. I'm still in my pyjamas, obviously. Just been giving him a feed. He's now at the point where I can't feed him and talk to the camera. He just comes straight off and looks around at the camera. Uh, so not going to be able to do that anymore, film like that anymore, so that's something that's changed. But welcome to 24 hours in the life of a 7 month old and a lot has changed since I did the 6 month one. Partly I think that's because I filmed the 6 month one when he was only sort of just 6 months whereas he's currently 7.5 months, so it's actually been I think 5 or 6 weeks between the two videos. But so much has changed in that time. Uh, I will talk more about that as the day progresses, but the only thing we have to do today is at 10 o'clock, oh, pardon you, at 10 o'clock today, we are going to go and view a nursery that he's potentially going to go to start going to when he's one years old. So it's quite exciting, I'm a bit nervous. I have actually visited this nursery before when I had foster children, I had a foster child that needed to go to nursery and so I have looked at some of the local ones annoyingly the nursery that is literally around the corner from me like a two minute walk away is completely full and not only is the the nursery full the waiting list is full as well they're not even putting people on the waiting list so that one I've had to accept like we're never he's never going to get to go to but the this other one is not too far away it's about a 10 minute walk from my house I think I'll just drive up there today just to make things easier but it is definitely walkable um, too. So it's not the end of the world, it's just it would have been nice to be local, but I'm hopeful that it will still be nice. I have seen it, as I said, I have seen it before. From my memory it was a lovely nursery, so I'm hoping it's still that way. Uh, but we get to meet like the lead nursery nurse and everything, so I'm hopeful that it's going to look good, because I really obviously want to find somewhere nice for him to go um, when he's one. And other than that, we currently have no plans for the day. We are very on the move now, I think crawling is not very far away. Just gonna scoff my breakfast down and then I will go and get dressed. So annoyingly, our unusual nap time is normally around 10 a.m. but that's the time that we've got to go to view this nursery so I'm not sure how it's gonna be. I think I'm, as I said, I'm gonna drive up there, put him in the carrier, hopefully we'll just have a, a quick look around and then get back here and I'll be able to extend his nap back to about sort of 10.30ish. He's been awake a while. He does this unusual thing now where in the morning He'll wake up and he won't call out to me. He'll just kind of happily roll about his bed for a bit, about half an hour almost, and then he'll start crying and want me to come in and see him. But until that point, I just leave him happily playing because he's just, you know, chatting to himself, rolling around, having a great time. So he has actually been up longer than 9am. He would never wake up as late as 9am. He isn't, however, unfortunately, still sleeping through the night. So that is one thing that is no longer the case. Like I said before, Babies change all the time. He's currently going through a bit of a regression, so that's fun. But it is completely normal for babies to do this, so I'm not worried. Yeah, we do. Oh, do we do it? I think some stuff is under. I don't want you to get cold toes, he's do you? Right, we're gonna go head off and see this nursery now. It is quarter to 11 right now. Um, got a bit delayed getting back in because I live in a block of flats and somebody had accidentally parked in my car park space rather than the visitor one, which um, I parked in someone else's temporarily while I figured out who that was and they were able to move their car, but Orin, bless him, well overdue and at that point, so I was like, I'm going to have to park someone else's space, take him out, go in, put him down, message the like group chat that we have for the block of flats and be like, has anyone got a visitor? <laughs> Could they please just move the car so I can come back and move mine back into where it is? But it's a little bit difficult because by pure luck, my car park space, my regular one, has um, quite a large gap down the side of it, so it's easy to get on in and out of his car seat. But if I take one of the other spaces, they usually don't have as much room, so it's a little bit more tricky. Uh, so normally I'm very lucky with that, but it does make... We, we managed, that's the main thing, we managed. Feed it out, sorted that, but it's been a little bit, little bit of a faff. And then I was just talking to my neighbour now about a um, lunch we're all having together in the garden for one of the last nice days of the year with the flat pe um, other members of the block of flats that we're in. So that should hopefully be really nice. I quite like living in a block of flats, actually. Um, we have like a nice little community here, so that's, that's one of the nice things. When it works out well, it works well. Anyway, Oren is now down asleep and I'm hoping he's going to do a reasonably long nap because he was very, very tired, bless him. But the nursery looked good, had a nice vibe there. That's kind of, I think, what I really wanted to see was whether I felt like it would be a nice place for him to be or not. They had lots of lovely stuff for him to play with, so I think he'd be very happy there. I have got one other one that I want to go and look around. Um, and the other one, like my dilemma is that the other nursery that I haven't seen yet, they are further away 
but they are part of the group of the nursery that is literally one minute away from me. So there's a, so I know if I go on the wait go on the list to go there, I think they will also put me on the wait list for this one. So there's a possibility he might be able to go to the local one, which I've had um, foster children previously go to. So I know it's really nice and it's just so much more convenient. <laughs> it is so annoying and it's my own fault because I knew that nursery lists get really busy, but I initially didn't think that Oren would go to nursery because my parents very kindly have offered to have him uh, one day a week. But I was thinking, actually, I think it'd be good for him to have some like interaction with other babies as well. I think I'd quite like that for him to have that. And also, I don't want to rely on my parents every week to have him. Um, they're going to have him up until he's one. I wanted to have like him with, with me and with my family until he was one. But from one, I think he'll be all right to go off to a nursery. And also, I can have an extra day. I can do two days a week there. So it just gives me a little bit more time to work as well, which would be good. But yeah, that meant that because I wasn't sure about that until literally like a couple of months ago, I didn't like go and look at nurseries. I didn't even put my name down for them. And so this one obviously has got really busy, but the other one, it's not the end of the world. It's not that far, it's still walking distance. It's just because I have one that is so convenient, a little bit annoying that I didn't think to, to check that out a bit sooner. So yeah, I think I need to go and see the other nursery that's further away, the furthest away, but part of the same group that's closest to me and just see whether I like the vibe there more, whether I think it's worth risking it to go on the list to see if I'll get here have a word with them see what they say like talking in person I don't know but the nursery I saw say was really nice I'd be very happy for him to go there so that's a good thing I think so interestingly I've just had a letter from the maternity allowance people basically the DWP which is the department of work and pensions that handles maternity allowance here in the UK because I called them I think last week or the week before basically to tell them that I'm going back to work in mid-October and uh, I had to let them know, have to let them know when you're working and to update them on the kit days that I've taken. And they've just sent me a letter and it looks like they're actually going to pay me longer than I thought I was going to get. Because when I was on the phone to the lady at the department, she said to me, because I'm only going back to work like part time, I'm only going to work once a week, that actually the payments will last for a bit longer for some reason. So yeah, so I was rather a nice surprise. I didn't realise I was going to have that. It's only one extra month. Um, but yeah, all, all helps. <laughs> they do write this in a really weird way though. Like they can't just send a normal letter saying this is what's happened. They have to like go about it in some convoluted route. But yeah, basically, luckily they have a reason for this decision box where they've written, uh, you've informed us you are returning to work. So at least I know they've got the right reason. It's pretty much 11 o'clock now and I'm actually really hungry. However, Oren is such a light sleeper that I know the minute I turn on any sort of like I try and do any cooking in the kitchen it's going to wake him up so I'm gonna have to just get by I think this find some snacks that I can have quite quietly I've never had a baby quite as sensitive to sound as he is he's in his bedroom he's got a white noise machine on you know but he he's just never been a great napper to be honest he has got better if he's in his cot and he's in like a dark environment etc he will nap a bit better as long as i stay quiet but every single time that i've like tried to cook in the kitchen or something he will wake up he's just so sensitive and it's funny because i've realized before i had orin i would have absolutely been one of those people being like you need to train them to sleep in a noisy environment like you just need to they'll go to sleep orin is not this child he will not do that I once took him out for the day when he was five months old and I very much was like, he'll eventually get tired, he'll sleep in the pram, like he'll, you know, we'll make it work. He slept 10 minutes the entire day because he will not sleep in a noisy environment. And he's got better now, he's bigger. If I'm in, if he's in a push chair, he will, but it'll be 15 minutes tops, 15, 20 minutes tops. Um, even with the rocket on, even if I find somewhere a bit calmer, he's just... He's just never been a baby that you can that is dead to the world and you can put to sleep and kind of do what you want. You have to keep him moving or have a rocket on him. It's really interesting because I've had nine kids through fostering and I thought I kind of was like, ah, oh, I figured it all out. But my child is clearly determined to show me that is not the case. He is just not a baby who will sleep. And I've started to realise that I am probably the asshole who had said to other parents, you know, if you get them used to noisy environments, you make lots of clattering and banging around, they'll eventually learn to sleep through it. Yeah, I'm really, really having my comeuppance now because that is just not going to happen with Orin. Milky time! Yeah, there you go. There's your milky. Well, they did a reasonable length of nap there, I think. You might be able to hear them, but the gardeners turned up and they always cut 
right up around the edges of the building, so I'm pretty sure that won't come up. The trials and tribulations of a light sleeper, huh? So one of the changes that I mentioned earlier that's happened within the last um, month, since I did the last video at least, is that uh, Orin's been diagnosed with an allergy. So his milk has been switched to, we've actually tried two different milks in that time period. The first one was a, non, was a hypoallergenic formula but wasn't a high calorie one and he barely gained any weight on that one so they've put him back on the high calorie one and he's done much better on that one. He's had weight gain issues since he was born and we never thought it was anything other than low supply. However, around the five month mark, he had a couple of other things start showing up, which just made me think a bit like, hmm, maybe there is something else going on here. And uh, a doctor said that he felt it was probably an allergy too, and so we've cut that out. And without the, the formula, he still would have weight gain issues, but he the other stuff has completely cleared up, which is great. Oh my God, there's literally like gardeners mowing the lawn on this side of the house and this side of the house. So the audio on this section is gonna be completely messed up. I was kind of hoping that maybe the allergy would fully explain like his weight gain issues on its own. However, um, I was prescribed a medication, it's called Domperidone, to boost my milk supply when we thought it was just a milk supply issue. And um, because he was also switched on to a new formula at the time, um, it, he didn't gain much weight on that formula, even though I was taking Domperidone and my milk supply went up. And more recently, I actually have been weaning off the Domperidone because I felt it did boost my supply, but not a huge amount. Um, so I've slowly been weaning off it and I've finally stopped it this week and my supply has just completely dropped through the floor. I barely was able to pump anything. I mean, literally like a week or two ago when I would pump in the day, if Oren was at my parents' house, I could pump like 120, 130 mils of milk. I think I barely pumped 50 yesterday. Um, I yesterday evening I only pumped 40 mil, which is way lower than I usually would. So um, my supply has definitely dropped with coming off that medication. So... I had a bit of a mope around yesterday feeling a bit sorry for myself about it, but then realised um, I'm just going to have to accept that if I want to breastfeed, um, majority breastfeed and just top up with formula, I'm going to have to take that supplement for the time that I'm, the whole time that I'm breastfeeding. Um, I'm just going to have to accept that. And in some ways I guess I'm very lucky I do have that option and it should also mean that when it comes to the point that I'm ready to come off breastfeeding, it should make stopping breastfeeding not too difficult to do. But it does kind of suck to just be at a place where I'm having to realise that like this is just not going to happen naturally for me now. And also that there was a little bit of me I think that was hoping that the, the first few months where we struggled a bit with weight and it just not being quite enough was possibly just down to this allergy, but it does look like actually my supply is also on the low side too. So I think I was just feeling a bit sorry for myself about that because I had had this, when he was diagnosed, I had this slight bit of hope that maybe that was all the issues that we'd, we'd solved in one and basically realizing that that's not the case. But yeah, like the minefield of emotions around breastfeeding was something I was really not prepared for I think when I started this journey because I really don't want to still be taking this medication but I also am not ready to stop breastfeeding yet and I could still breastfeed him to some extent but I would have to up his formula in order to do that because he's still weighed every two weeks because of the weight stuff and the last two weeks where I've been like cutting down my Domperidone his weight gain hasn't been as good. But the good news is that now he's like seven and a half months, his weaning is going really well. Uh, we use weaning, by the way, in the UK to describe like introducing solids. It doesn't necessarily mean coming off of milk. Um, although we do say also weaning off of breastfeeding as well. So I guess it's a bit confusing, but I'm not talking about weaning breastfeeding. I'm not reducing his breastfeeds or his milk at the moment, particularly because of, as I said, the weight stuff. And that's not what we're being advised to do by the medical professionals that we're under. But in terms of weaning and the solid food that he's having, he's doing much, much better. He's eating a lot more. So that's another good thing as well. So Oren needs a nappy change. And this is another stage that we have now reached. It's like trying to change an octopus because we flip over onto our tummy as soon as we can, don't we? Fun time. Okay, okay. Right, let's unpop you this way. But mummy, mummy can't change you this way up, I'm afraid. I'm not at that skill level yet. Roly poly, roly poly. One white box, two whites. No, right, oh look, here's a toy, here's a snappy. Let's play with this. Are you having fun? We're getting your body in the air. No, Orin, Orin. Chiefs, creeps. Can we get this popper on? Can we get the popper on? Orin. Okay. Okay, can I get this popper on? Darling, okay. Honestly, it's like trying to wrestle a walrus. A very small walrus, but still a walrus. <laughs> Done. Did we get you changed? Did you? Yeah. Do you want one? 
so I made these puff pastry pinwheels, um, I think two days ago now, and they basically have just got some um, pea puree in it from a pouch that he didn't eat because Oren is very much um, baby led weaning at the moment where he's finger food um, eating. He refuses to take anything from a spoon. So I've tried the pouches both like just directly into his mouth from the pouch and on a spoon, neither of which he wants to take, but I didn't want to waste this like pea puree. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll spread it out on a sheet of puff pastry, roll it up and then cut it into swirls. And it's been a massive hit. So he has been devouring these the last few days, which is very exciting. But it is kind of incredible just how quickly they get from like not eating at all to actually quite competently eating in just a couple of weeks. At the moment, he's not getting a whole lot of calories from it. I think a lot of it just ends up kind of smushed around his face and on the floor. But we're practicing, aren't we, darling? And that's the main thing. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. But he didn't eat quite as much there as I thought he might. So I think I might have fed him a little bit too soon after his last bottle. But he ate a bit, so that's good. It's now the point in the day where we just do lots of playing, don't we? He's at that stage where he's kind of dropping from three naps to two. Uh, it sort of depends how long his naps are. If he does a really short second nap, then he'll need a third one. But if he does a reasonably long second nap, then he won't. So I'm hoping he might go, it's currently one o'clock, and I'm hoping I can get him to two, and then he can get over a nap then. And then at that point, if he does a reasonably long nap, he shouldn't need another one today. Where's my <laughs> The other thing that's going on in the background today is a lot of planning for a trip that we have next week. We seem to have had a ton of holidays fall in this one spot this year. So since the last video I did, we've been to Norway with my parents on a cruise, and we've also been to Greece with a small group of other sailor mums, which was amazing. They were both fantastic holidays. Uh, he didn't sleep great on them because we had to share a room in them and he's never good at sharing a room now. So that wasn't fun, was it, monkey? And I don't know if it's just the after effects of those two holidays that his sleep is not as great now or if it's just a seven month, eight month regression, whatever you call it. Uh, but he's not, as I said before, that great at sleeping at the moment. But next week, we are going away to Centre Parks with some friends of mine. And it should be a lovely time. It's another group of Zella Mums. There's more of us this time. There's nine of us plus nine babies. So it would probably be quite chaotic. But I'm really looking forward to it. It's not too far from us. So we're able to drive there, which is great. And it's only four nights. And because we did it where we had the exact number of bedrooms for each of us going, we were able to split the cost equally between us all. Really, yeah. We were able to split the cost equally between us also. Actually, ends up not being that expensive. Of course, we're also going out of season, not in the, the school holidays, because we don't need that yet. Are you trying to push up to crawl? Oh my goodness. <gasps> He's trying to push up to crawl. Oh my God, my baby's getting so big. You gotta stop growing. I mean, not really, I do want him to grow, but like, mommy just wants to hold on to time. He's doing that thing where he's up on his hands and knees and rocking back and forth. <laughs> oh, I think I'm gonna have a crawler before next video. <laughs> We'll have to see. But yeah, so we're planning this holiday and it's just wonderful because it's all a group of women and like there are spreadsheets for everything. It's a spreadsheet for what people are bringing, spreadsheet for the days, like plans and everything. It's just wonderful. The part of me that loves to see a plan and loves data and everything is loving the spreadsheets. We've just had a feed, just did a breastfeed this time. It's coming up to 1.30. I don't think he's going to last till 2 or 2.30 easily, so I'm thinking that I might take him <laughs> off to the shops. Should we go for a trip to the shops? Oh, darling, really, really. So I'm thinking I might get the pushchair out and we might go and do um, a food shop. There's a few bits I need to get. I want to make him some chicken and broccoli um, balls for... Mm, do you want for dinner later? Maybe for dinner later. Um, or at least to make them to freeze for another time. I don't have any broccoli though, so I need to go and get some of that. And there's a few other bits I need to pick up ready to take for our trip next week. Although it's only Thursday and when we're going on Monday, so I'm wondering if I might want to leave that until a little bit close to the time so things are fresh. Um, I need to double check my list and see that. But I'm just currently debating whether or not that might be the easiest thing to do, to go to the shops and that will keep you awake a bit longer and uh, get me something get some chores done as well. So I just had a look at the food that's on my list to take for the trip and I realised there's actually only one thing I haven't gotten yet. So it would only be one item I need to go pick up. But we do still need the broccoli for today. Mummy would quite like some sausages too. So I think we might go and do the trip just for the sake of it, to be honest. And it should also get us out of the house for a bit and into the fresh air. Nothing better than fresh air is there. Well, I was thinking that I would take the um, push chair to the shops, but then actually it's a pretty nice day today. It's not too cold. Um, it's also not that much shopping we've got to get. There's only about four things on my list. So even if I grab a few other things, I think I can carry them back. So we're actually going to 
um, take the carrier, I think, today, Mickey. These, by the way, these little things I'm putting on here are called sock-ons. <laughs> They're basically designed to stop them kicking their socks off. And they actually work, which is the best thing. Look at that. The sun's even made an appearance for us. I need to get you a hat. Oh, that was a lovely walk until the moment I got literally to, like, my road and felt like I stood on a thorn or something with my toe. I think it must have been a rock. But, oh, my God. Like, ouch, that was really, really sore. Also completely random, but the mirror that was on this wall here fell down one day and I've been really missing it since it's been gone. So I keep meaning to get a new mirror and constantly forgetting, but every time I'd go and put a jacket on and i turn around to kind of check how I look at the mirror, I realise it's not there, and then I realise how much I actually use that mirror. <sighs> now I'm going to take this monkey off, put them down on the floor to play for a bit, probably moan, while I unpack the shopping, and then, oh, it's two o'clock now, and it could be bedtime soon. So Oren has just gone down for his second nap of the day, and I am going to sit here and read my book, because I had a new book released just today, which is one I've been waiting for for a while, so that's really exciting. I do also need to think about cooking those chicken and broccoli balls at some point, but part of the good thing about him being a bit of a light sleeper is I don't really want to do that while he's sleeping, and something I'm really trying to get more into the habit of now is not feeling like I need to earn my downtime. Like when he's asleep, I need to, I must use that time to clean the kitchen or do some cooking or tidy up or do something um, in order to earn my downtime. I saw this quote recently and it really resonated with me, so I wanted to read it to you. And it starts, Growing up, I never knew a relaxed woman. Successful women? Yes. Productive women? Plenty. Anxious and afraid and apologetic women? Heaps of them. But relaxed women? ease women, women who aren't afraid to take up space in the world, women who prioritise rest and pleasure and play, women who give themselves unconditional permission to relax, without guilt, without apology, without feeling like they need to earn it. I'm not sure I've ever met a woman like that, but I would like to become one. I would like us all to become one. And that's by Nicola Jane Hobbs. That quote really resonated with me because I feel like I've got quite good at setting boundaries for myself, at being like, yes, I can do this, no, that's too much but I don't think I'm that good at setting boundaries for myself when it comes to just allowing myself to do things I enjoy without feeling guilty because I haven't, you know, finished the washing up or I haven't under the dishwasher. So that's something I'm consciously trying to do now. And it's been interesting because I've been working on this for over a week now, only a week, but for a week. And I've noticed already, I actually find that I get that stuff done eventually anyway, because there comes a point where I'm like, actually, this is a bit, bit too much washing up for me. Let me just clear it up now and get it done. So it's, it always gets done in my house, it's just my flat is never going to look pristine because I have a baby now, I have other priorities. But I find it interesting, I don't think men, I think men often get asked what their hobbies are, whereas women get asked what our guilty pleasures are, and it already like infers the fact that it's guilty pleasure, not just what our pleasures are. It insinuates that like, we should feel guilty for that, we have to earn the right to those pleasures. But I feel like starting from the language we use and also the mental language used with ourselves can be a really good place. So from now I'm trying to remember whenever I go into a room and think, oh, like I need to clean that up or something, but I really want to read my book or I really want to watch this program, I'm going to go, no, I have been working all day raising a child, I am entitled to read my book or I'm you know, perfectly able to watch my show that I want to without feeling like I need to do the washing first. It can wait, it will eventually get done at some point. This is my time now. So currently really trying to work on that. Um, but I wanted to share that with you just in case any of you out there also can relate to that. You don't just have to be a parent to relate to that, by the way. I think any woman can relate to this feeling that she's got tons of things she needs to do and she must get those jobs done before she can relax. And we're going to work our way out of that space now, folks. Did you do big sleepies? You did. It is quarter to four now. He is currently having his bottle. He actually had a really good nap. I'd say it was close to an hour and a half, actually, that he napped just then. It's a good nap for you, my lovely. So that should be his last nap of the day now. I had a really chill time reading my book, watching stuff on my laptop. So the next thing I think I'll do is, when he's had this bottle, put him down on his mat and see if he's happy to play. I might put CBeebies on as well to see if that helps too. And then I'm going to attempt to make this chicken and broccoli ball recipe uh, because I really want to put some in, I really want to make some for his uh, dinner later. Um, if I don't know, there's plenty of stuff in the fridge I can use, it's just I have this chicken that really needs to be used up to date because otherwise I'm gonna have to throw it away. I didn't get a chance to clean up his tray from earlier so I also need to sort that out too. But I've noticed that sometimes if he doesn't wanna play on his mat, he's sometimes happy to sit in his high chair with me in the kitchen and play, so we might do that as well. 
Um, but yeah, this recipe does involve, it's not a quick one. That I've, I've done this recipe before with other children. It's not super quick, but it's not super long either. It's just a bit of a process, so I just need to see if I can do that. I think they look pretty good. Now I need to go sort out that upset baby. Oh darling, it's okay. Did mummy have the audacity to go and cook you some nice food for later and not pay you 100% attention? I'm sorry. I think these uh, dungarees may need to be retired after today. <laughs> they're, it's ridiculous. They're M&S these ones and they're so long in the body. Like there's still room on his body part but the legs are already on the short side so... I think we're going to have to put these ones away after today. So it's just coming up to five o'clock. I was just getting Orin a feed and he's doing this thing now where he'll come off and just sort of play with my nipple and squeeze it and stuff. But of course when he squeezes it, the milk like shoots out everywhere. So it ends up going all over. I mean, one hand reassuring to see my milk is still doing that. But on the other, like, I'd like to have my top not soaking with milk. Thank you. So I think I'm going to aim to do dinner for this one. In about 15 minutes, I'm waiting for the... Um, Broccoli bite, uh, chicken and broccoli bites to cool down. There you go. So he didn't really eat many of those. Um, I'm going to try again maybe tomorrow at lunchtime because you might just not have been hungry this evening. But it's always a bit annoying when you've like really tried hard to cook something good for them and then they're like, well. I did cut them up into like narrow pieces to make it easier to hold to see if that was the issue. And he did hold it a bit better, but he didn't really eat too much. I think he's tired, as you can see. He didn't really try that much. And I cut it in half again just to see if smaller pieces were more palatable. But um, yeah, no, he's usually quite good at picking up and like maneuvering food now. So I don't think that was the issue. I think he might still like them. I'll give him another shot tomorrow. It's just coming up to six o'clock now. We're just watching CBBS, and in about five ten minutes, it'll be time to go get ready for bed. Because this one goes down any time between sort of six fifteen and six thirty, and if he's really really tired, he'll sometimes go down at six. But I think today he'll last a bit longer. It is now just gone past 7 p.m. He was a bit tricky to get down this evening. Normally he goes down quite easily um, at night time, but I put him down and he fussed for quite a while and I went back in and offered him the other breaths and he fussed for quite a bit, but eventually went down. Um, so I'd say he's been down for around 15 minutes now. Um, I didn't want to film just in case my voice woke him up in that time, but I think I can pretty confidently say that he is settled now. I need to start thinking about dinner for myself quite soon. I'm probably going to make some homemade noodles, bacon noodles. I really like that. I think I have all the ingredients for it. But in the meantime, I'm currently um, on free prints, just sorting out some photos I want to get because I'm having a naming ceremony for Orin next month. And I want to do like this little photo wall thing, which is going to be made from like garden twine and some little pegs as well. I've already bought the pegs. They're really cheap on Amazon. And um, I need to find, I need to put some pictures on there now. So I think the best way to do that is just going to be to do some free prints from my phone. So I need to go through and select the ones I want right now. That was good. Just ordered all the pictures. It only cost me 3 99 to get 42 pictures, which I think is pretty good. Uh, bonus, I actually forgot that I had some leftovers in the fridge. So I'm going to eat that up tonight and uh, save myself a night of cooking. So when I made that dinner last night, I didn't quite make enough sauce um, to put in the box so I wasn't really able to finish it because it's a bit dry and it's unfortunately it's not one of those sauces I can just kind of quickly whip up it was like cooked in a pan and everything and I can't be asked to do that and there isn't really any other sauce I think would go with it because it's quite a specific flavour so I think I'm gonna have to leave the rest of that but it's okay because my mum has been experimenting with making cake pops um for again Orin's naming ceremony there's a lot of prep going into Orin's naming ceremony at the moment and I have been slowly eating these throughout the day and I have two left I have a chocolate one and an iced one and I think I'm going to have the chocolate one and leave the iced one for last but these are really really tasty my mum's really good at cooking it is now five to ten in the evening and i have a bit of a dilemma on my hands because at 10 o'clock is normally when i pump before going to bed however the last few nights well actually the last couple of weeks actually Oren has woken up roughly around this time so i definitely want to pump it's just whether i wait until i see if he wakes up or i pump and just risk it and hope that if he does wake up there's still enough milk left for him to have which I don't know at the moment because I've just started taking my medicine again 
but it usually takes a couple of days to kick in so I don't know if because I was I've only just come off it and gone back on it again whether it will increase quicker I also kind of want to have a bath as well because it's a bit chilly tonight and I just feel like I feel a bit more kind of ready to settle down for the night if I had a bath although actually thinking about it I'd rather have the bath just before I go to bed and pump first so I think I'm gonna wait five minutes until 10 o'clock risk it and just pray that he doesn't wake up around now then I'm gonna pump and then I will go and have my bath and have a sort of early night I've been trying to have an early night for the last god knows how many days because Orin is waking up quite frequently in the night at the moment and so I'm knackered in the morning but of course like your time to yourself is so precious <laughs> I don't know about you guys but even if I'm really tired by the time I get to this point in the evening I'm just like awake because I'm aware that oh my gosh I've got time to like sit down and watch Netflix or sit and read my book or do something myself and so even if I'm like I really should go to bed now mentally my brain just won't switch off like I just lie in bed thinking I need to do this I need to do this I need to do this am I hungry am I thirsty all sorts of things so there's no point trying to get to bed yet because I'll just lie there being distracted by stuff but I am going to pump at 10 o'clock and then I am going to have a bath and then I will get into bed at that point and probably just sit there and read my new book for a bit longer and on the book trend picking up from last time I'm pretty sure it was still this book that I was reading or I was about to start reading I'm now like a good chunk of the way through um having a couple of holidays recently gave me some time to read it I am loving this so far I'd say I'm about almost three quarters of the way through I'm just over half and uh yeah two thirds of the way through and I'm really really enjoying it it's I only have time at the moment to read like generally speaking when I have a bath in the evening it's where I tend to like have my non-fiction reading time is in the bath and then I read my fiction books in bed because I just I have a routine like that but yeah based off of where I'm currently at this book would highly recommend reading it's a very positive book it makes you feel like really hopeful about the future and things so if you're not kind of like a negative dark space and thinking humanity is awful the planet's burning to death everything like that this is definitely a book I'd recommend you try reading because it does put like a really positive light on things well I just finished pumping for about 15 minutes and there's definitely less in here than I would normally get I think it might be slightly more than I got yesterday I, I'm not sure this is the boob I fed off him last off of so it's not got quite as much in um I think it's slowly going up but it definitely will take another couple of days I think for my supply to increase again having stopped the domperidone but hopefully within the next two days I should see it kind of go back up again and then I can slowly wean down to the lowest level I can take which will not impact my supply yeah it's it's annoying but I guess it is what it is uh, the most annoying part about it actually is that my GP will not prescribe this drug it's not part of their policy because domperidone is not actually designed specifically for milk production it's just a side effect of it so um, I had to see a lactation consultant who's also a qualified doctor who was willing to prescribe it to me but she's private so um, I had to a pay for the prescription which is I think about 50 pounds for six weeks worth but that's if I'm taking nine tablets if I can like reduce the dose slightly I think it will work out as longer than that but also like I need to I think I have to have another appointment with her before she'll do another prescription and like that's not cheap either because I have to pay for the appointment so it's just like more costs on top of everything which is slightly annoying given that his formula is actually free because it's a special prescribed one but like this is what I have if I'm not taking it and this is hours after he's gone to bed and he's last had a feed so you know it is what it is and also I think because he has got to have formula top-ups now the fact that he has some feeds which are formula will not be helping my supply but for me it's the routine that works I haven't got the energy or the patience anymore to do a top-up after every individual breastfeed which is what you would ideally need to do if you're like really trying to build your supply um, but I rather have like just two bottles a day that I have to give him and two bottles to wash rather than multiple bottles of multiple washing it just it's just the routine and it also it makes it easy to go out so it's just the routine that works for me and if that means I have to take medication in order to keep my supply up then so be it but I'm definitely not ready to give up breastfeeding just yet it is something I still enjoy having with him it's a connection I still like having when I started out on the journey I didn't really have any sort of plans for how long I would do it for I think initially my goal was to get to 12 weeks and then to six months and now I'm hoping maybe up to a year just kind of keeps moving 
but um yeah but yeah i do know i'm not ready to stop just yet and i think i've just got to accept that that means i'm gonna have to take this medication and i'm gonna have to pay for it to keep going on it uh, until I reach a point where I am ready to be done with it. But right now I am going to go and put these in the fridge. I'm also going to go and start running the bath and then I'm going to finish uh, cleaning up and tidying up the kitchen and the dinner area because I couldn't be bothered to when he finished earlier. So it's all chaos there, but I've been taking my time for me to watch my program and read my book and have my enjoyment without thinking that I needed to do it. And it has been wonderful. It may or may not be midnight now <laughs> and I'm still in the living room. <laughs> I had my bath, I read a bit of my book, I came back, I got sucked in an Instagram hole, and yeah, I'm still not feeling really tired though, so like if I felt tired earlier I would have gone to bed, but I'm just not, Oren hasn't woken up, famous last words, he hasn't woken up yet, so I'm hoping he might do a good stretch tonight, never know, and typically I didn't go to bed early to make the most of it, anyway, I have been watching um, Good Omens 2, I'm on the last episode, I've, I've watched this series like twice already, I really love it, I only just discovered it somehow, but it's great, really hoping they do a season 3, um, so I'm going to watch the last one of that, and then I think I will try and go to bed, at least if it's just to go and read my book, because otherwise I am going to be knackered, I'm already going to be knackered in the morning, I just need to accept this, I'm just going to be knackered, and it's a price worth paying to have some time to myself in the evening. <laughs> Good morning once again. It is now around 9.20, unbelievably, and I woke up twice last night, which is not as much as he has been waking up sometimes recently, so that's not too bad. And he woke up earlier than that. He woke up, I think, around 7, because I heard him sort of on the monitor moving about, but he wasn't crying out. He was quite happy there. And then he obviously went back to sleep, and he didn't wake up till 9, because that's when he started crying out for me to come and get him, and then we just had a feed right now. So yeah, it's uh, very interesting how everything changes, they get older, sleep patterns, things they're doing, food, all of that stuff. So I really hope you enjoyed this day in the life of, a, well, 24 hours with a seven month old. As I said, definitely a lot has changed, I think, since the last one, mainly the food, allergy stuff, um, lots of things have happened, which is why it's intriguing for me to do these videos, because I can see just how much changes month to month. So. Next time we will see you for 24 hours in the life of an eight month old. But thank you so much for watching guys. Do please subscribe and I will see you again soon. Bye. Say bye everyone. Bye guys.